failed print. Those are the two words that a 3D printer never wants to hear. But unfortunately, those words resonate in everyone's mind because we have all faced it at one point or another. But not all failed prints are necessarily a bad thing. Some of them can be fixed. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do that and what to fix it with. So I know we went over videos before where I talk about different things that you can use for cracks and gaps and all that kind of stuff. Well, today's we're gonna be talking about splits and holes and a couple of other things that you can use to repair your 3D prints. So one of the things that I found in my wandering of the hardware stores is this right here. This is a plastic wood filler. I tell you, I have not had anything work any better on the wood filler part than this stuff right here. It's very, very good. So the other thing that you can use is a tad more expensive and a little getting used to, but it works just as great, if not better. And I have been using this stuff for years. And that's this right here. This is Aves Epoxy. And this is a two-part sculpting epoxy. And uh, this stuff right here will help you fix any holes, seams, gaps, or anything like that. But today we're going to be talking about failed prints or damaged prints. So if you see my video for Tengen, then you know that I am printing all the Kajiro animals that goes along with it. The owl and the fox as well as the panther. Well, these at 200% scale are some pretty big models. And I have printed the fox and the owl and they come out just almost perfect. However, the Panther I knew was going to give me problems. It is a huge, huge print. And sure enough, I had a lot of problems with one of the wings, um, but I did not want to go through another 20 hour print. So I'm going to salvage this wing right here and I'm going to show you how to do it. And you can use this method and you can use these products on any of your failed prints or somewhat failed prints or damaged prints. Now first off, let me start off by saying, not all failed prints are salvageable. 90% of the time, they're just deplorable. They're just, you, you gotta start over. I am talking about the ones that come off the printer you spend a ton of time on that may have little cracks or holes or something of that nature, but you just don't wanna go through the expense of paying out more for resin and waiting another few hours or how long it takes to reprint it. So let's take a look at this and see how bad it really is. So this is the Kajiro Panther. It goes along with the Tengen model that I did. And um, this thing is a monster. And I mean that literally. Very, very detailed, beautiful model from Black Forge Games. And you can see right here in front, there's one of the issues right there where there's a split in the wing. And up underneath it right there, there's I fixed a little part but I'm gonna show you where the print failed in a piece and what I'm gonna to do to fix it and what you can do for like minor imperfections and such as, uh, such as that with, this, uh, with these two products. This thing is massive. It has a wingspan of, get this, 26 inches across. That is over two feet wide. So I have no idea where I'm gonna put this when I'm done, but let's take a look at this wing and see how bad it really is. All right, so this is the wing in question right here. And as you can see how big this thing is with next to my hand, I mean, it's pretty good size. Um, so this was so big, I had to cut this uh, into two pieces on my Mono X. As you can see down here, this gap right here, this is nothing. This can be fixed with some uh, photopolymer resin but as you can see right above, there are some splits in this thing. And there's even an imperfection right here where the print failed and didn't produce this feather. So there's other areas on here that are split. Uh, as you can see right up here, this is a separate piece that actually the wing attaches on. Um, and on this side here, we had a big split up there on the top and uh, right there was a hole that I had patched up and then I have another big split. So um, 
this is kind of an inconvenience, but as you can imagine, this was a 21 hour print and I do not want to reprint this over again. So I'm gonna use these two products here to fill these holes and imperfections and show you how they work. And that begins right now. So this plastic wood filler right here is a little bit different than your normal wood filler. Uh, it doesn't shrink, doesn't uh, expand or anything like that, and doesn't like crack on you over time. Um, some of your other wood fillers could do all that. So this is shrink and crack resistance. It's also very good for sanding. So um, light scratches, big cracks or gouges and stuff, this stuff is really good. So this comes out in like a toothpaste type form that's pretty thick and it's really good to you know put in cracks and crevices uh, and minor imperfections and everything. Um, you can do seams with it. I mean, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, it is pretty thick. You can thin it out with water. Uh, it cleans up pretty easy with water. I just like to wear a glove with it because it does uh, tend to get everywhere and uh, <laughs> and it's pretty hard to get off your fingers and stuff. It's you know it's just like any other type of wood filler. But uh, for large deep holes or gouges and stuff, I don't recommend this unless you have something that's actually um, backing up the hole. That way when you plug it, um, this stuff doesn't fall through. So mainly what we're gonna be using today is this right here, this two part uh, Aves epoxy. And I have been using this stuff for years. Um, it's very good. Um, actually sculptors, some sculptors actually sculpt with it. Um, because you can shape it, form it with water, um, however you want. It's a two-part mixture and it comes out evenly. Um, basically, it's uh, you get part one and you add part two together evenly, or estimate, I mean, you, pretty much you can. And uh, you just kind of take these two pieces and just mix them up really good. I mean, you don't tear them apart. And uh, you want to mix these up really good and you have a pretty decent working time with this. That way you can go in and plug holes, uh, tape up seams or whatever like that with it. But once you do that, you can use water to thin it out, but you can even sculpt this while you um, have it in your, uh, on your model if you have unusual um, detail like this. So that's what I did here on this. I just actually plugged that hole and sculpted it. Now it will dry on its own, uh, once it starts drying, it gets super hard and uh, you can sand it, you can paint it, you can do whatever you want to with it. Um, but let's uh, go ahead and use some of this on this. All right, so for this, I have a little bit of this that I will actually kind of roll up in my hand, kind of get a good bead for it. And then I'll just basically put it into the, the seam right here, those little cracks, fill it up like so. And then I have a little sculpting tool here that I'll use. I'll kind of dip it in water and then I'll just kind of sculpt to kind of get the shape or form that I'm looking for. Um, kind of move it around a little bit to plug the hole up. And again, if you want to let this stuff dry, you can. Once it dries, you can go back in and sand it with a Dremel with sandpaper. Um, but I like to try and do take the, as much sanding work out as, as possible by going ahead and putting, uh, putting my touches to it with the sculpting tool. So here I have another split. So I'll do the same thing with that one. I'll take a little bit of this, kind of roll it up a little bit, and then I'll just fill that little, little seam right there. And then once again, I'll take my little sculpting tool here and I will just shape it however you want to. And there, it's pretty full. I mean, it's uh, filled. So the good thing is, is once you um, put some primer on this, uh, some filler primer, it'll actually help cover all this up. Now for the larger ones, like this up here at the top, this is gonna take a little bit of work. So you wanna take a little bit more. And uh, I'm gonna take this in pieces. And then like for this piece here, I'm gonna kinda tuck it up underneath there. And then I'm going to take and push it up into the hole or the crack. 
And again, you can do this with the uh, plastic filler as well, or any filler for that matter. I just love using this stuff right here because it works so well. And it really helps me with uh, failed prints or imperfections on prints. That way I just don't have to worry about spending the extra money and using the extra resin. Uh, and I can just uh, fix this pretty easy. It doesn't take very long rather than waiting to another 20 hours for a, a print to print out again. So once again, I'm taking and I'm just kind of shaping this. And you can put your finger in some water and you can shape it yourself if you want. Um, like so, it's very versatile, very versatile uh, to uh, shape and sculpt or do whatever you want to with it. I really love this stuff. And so I'm just gonna put some texture in there. And then the last part right here, I'm gonna get up underneath here. And again, I'm going to cover up that seam line. Uh, is this gonna be perfect fit, uh, perfect match? Absolutely not, probably not but it will allow me to get it pretty close. So what do we do for this right here that's missing this feather you're probably asking? Well, you have this wonderful thing online called Mesh Mixer. And so what I did was I just printed out a part of the wing. And uh, what I'm gonna do is all I need is just this little feather right here. So I'm actually gonna take and uh, sand that or uh, saw that off and I'm actually gonna connect it to this right here and bond it that way again. All I gotta do is to glue this on there and patch it up and bam, it's fixed. All right, so after a little glue, after cutting it, shaping it a little bit with a sander and gluing it on there, we're gonna take this and we're gonna patch it up with uh, the Aves Epoxy. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this and I'm going to apply it on top of the feather. Since I got that gap right there, I'm going to take and kind of work it in a little bit. And I'm going to add another little bit onto the other side. So I take some of this and I added it to right here and I shaped it a little bit to kind of give it a little bit of detail. Just a little sculpting here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just to kind of go along with the flow right here. And if you have an old brush, you know, just take this old brush, dip in some water, and you can actually smooth it out more if you want. And you can get to the point to where if uh, you get it smooth enough, you won't have to do any sanding to it. All right. And like I said, by the time that dries and you add some filler primer to it, you're really not going to tell any difference unless you just absolutely know it's there. So here is another piece off the tail from my fox. Uh, this one piece right here did not print off, and I'm not exactly sure why. So this piece right here is also a two-piece par uh, part because I had to go in the mesh mixer to splice it right there because it was way too big for the build plate. So I'm not sure why this one piece right here didn't fill out, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into mesh mixer and I'm actually going to just cut this piece right here uh, so that way I can add it on to this and I'll actually go in with that same epoxy or the wood filler and uh, cover up that seam and uh, repair this one. So this was almost a failed print, but again, this is one of those things, it's not so bad uh, to where I need to reprint the whole thing. So I apologize ahead of time, guys. My screen recorder is not working at the moment, but I'm going to show you this way. So if you are unfamiliar with Mesh Mixer, this is the home screen right here, the main screen. And it's quite simple. I'm going to show you how to do a plain cut. That way you can uh, actually go in slice files and uh, print pieces of them. There may be that it didn't print all the way or you just need to uh, cut off and redo or for any other matter. If you're just trying to size up something on your build plate. So simply just like this, you're going to come to the import button 
you're going to click on import then it's going to ask for a file and let's just go to this one here this is the nightcrawler smoke base from wicked art and this is going to come up here and you can do a full round with it and you can see the whole entire thing here so this is not going to fit on your build plate let's say that okay so <clears throat> this will be a difficult piece to splice but i'm just going to show you how to do it quite simple you go into to edit over here and then you're going to go into plane cut and then it's going to bring up your plane so you can cut it right here you can move it up and down and you can spin the plane here with this button to go whichever way you want now if you just need this one piece here then you're going to go up here to plane cut you're going to cut and discard the other half and just remeshed fill or if you want to keep both pieces let's keep both pieces so we're going to slice and keep both and hit accept and then it's actually going to look like it's whole again okay so what we want to do then is we want to go to separate shells so this will actually separate the two pieces actually here it's going to separate into three pieces so there's your one piece that's highlighted this is your other piece that's highlighted and I'm not sure what this third part here is it's probably something internal uh, that didn't gel together um, so we're actually going to go ahead and just uh, keep both pieces keep them as halves and we're going to export each piece we're going to put it up here and we're just going to name the file we're just going to say file and then we're going to save it and then it'll write all the vertices and save that file and all you do is you go to the second file when this is done and you're just going to do the same thing pretty simple stuff but this is a good way to splice your files um, you'll be able to uh, go and uh, make different parts if you to fit on your build plate to splice them up chop them up however you want to say it um, but this is just a little small crash course in uh, in mesh mixer so I'm sure everybody's wanting to know the cost on these two items so with the add as epoxy here this two-part epoxy it goes a long way and it will last you a long time unless you just have that much to mess up uh, but this is like around $25 for both pe both parts it comes together uh, and like I said it'll last you quite a while so this plastic wood filler right here costs about four dollars five dollars and I think you can get it I think I got this from Lowe's I think you could probably get it from Lowe's maybe even Walmart or Home Depot uh, but you can this stuff has like tons of uses uh, you can use it around your house if you're doing any kind of home projects as well. But this stuff is really good. Uh, we didn't go into it too much today because it works the same way as a putty would. Um, so there's really not too much to explain. I just really wanted to show you what kind of product it is and that I found it and it, it works good. So, all right, everybody. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope this was of some help to you and you got something out of it, even if it's just a small excerpt of it or if you understood the whole thing and it really helped you out. Now keep in mind, all print failures are different. So if you have a major print failure, don't go in and try to spackle or putty everything together. It's not gonna do you any good. It's just gonna make matters worse. But if you have a big piece like I showed you today, like a big wing or something like that, if you have a couple of slits and a couple of little small holes and maybe a little failure like I had that was pretty easy to repair, then this is a good way to do that without having to reprint the whole entire piece and plus, you know, spending a lot of money on resin again. So if you made it to this part of the video, don't forget to hit that like button for me and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any future videos. I also want to take this time to invite you to join our Patreon. The link is below in the description. You can get access to our Discord where we talk about all kinds of stuff, printing and painting. Don't forget I am on TikTok and Instagram and would love to have you over there as well. So until the next video, everybody, get out there and print and paint something and stay safe and we'll see you. Now I see what the hype is about. These things are awesome.